Hi, this is Jeremy Kellett, Director of Recruiting at Oakley Trucking. I'm your host for this podcast. This is the Oakley Podcast, Trucking Business and Family. This is episode 138, and on today's episode, i got a few of the operation managers in here that we're going to talk to, uh, Scotty Crisco, Nick Crisco, and Bradley Simpson, and with the in-dumps and the pneumatic division, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what uh, what's happening right now, what's and maybe what we think is going to happen this year. Uh, give us a little perspective on the freight, uh, dealing with customers. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe get off into a couple other things, that ha- you know, how we book freight and what we look for and and just our goals uh, a- as operation managers and what they do every day to make sure that uh, this company is doing good and our owner operators are doing good. So that's the plan here in just a minute. We're fixing to get started on that. But first, uh, let's give you an Oakley update. Oakley Trucking is a 100% owner-operator company. We specialize in hopper bottom, end dump, and pneumatic trailers. We provide the trailer free of charge, and you provide the truck. We have a large customer base that reaches the whole United States as well as parts of Canada. Our owner-operators live anywhere from Texas to North Carolina to Pennsylvania to Wisconsin and everywhere in between, and we get them home weekends. We take it seriously when you join Oakley Trucking because we need you to be successful. Oakley offers great benefits and competitive mileage pay so you know that when your wheels are turning, you're generating money no matter if you're loaded or empty. We understand that you want to make a good living and that you make our living. We only take on independent contractors, and to be honest with you, we are very particular on who we lease on. You must have a good driving record, good work history, and clean, dependable truck. So if you're interested in Oakley Trucking or just want some more information, you can go to oakleytrucking.com, listen to our weekly podcast, The Oakley Podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so two things real quick on the oakley update one is uh so if you don't know we we give the spouse a a gift card on the owner operator's anniversary so every month we send out a batch of gift cards well we are changing that you're still going to get money but it's going to be either uh, through a money transfer, Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal. So instead of sending the actual gift card to your house for the spouse, we are going to send them a card explaining that how you're going to to access this money, uh, you're going to have to download the app, Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal, one of the three, and then you email it to Vicki Chastain here at Oakley, and she will transfer the money to you. So I'm going to try to make it a little simpler. It may be a little difficult in the beginning, but we feel like uh, it's a whole lot more protected to do it that way than, than send in gift cards. And, and then you don't have to call about balances or anything like that. It's gonna, we hope it's going to streamline things, but maybe a little challenging at first. So, But it is going to make you download one of those apps if you want to get your money. So that's the way that's going to work. Also, I want to recognize... Um, an owner operator with us that's been with us eight years, uh, Rob and Tracy Johnson uh, from Park Hills, Missouri. Uh, just, just, you know, I can't say enough good about these people that they've just done a good job with us the whole time they've been here. They praise Oakley so much, and and they, I mean, and it shows of what they're driving. They're driving a 2022 Western Star that that Rob and Tracy spec'd out for the job. They're pulling an end dump with us and. And just have been an asset to Oakley Trucking, and I just want to say they're having their eight-year anniversary this month in January, and just want to say thank, thank you to them. Um, we appreciate having y'all. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, guys, got uh, Bradley Simpson, Nick Crisco, Scotty Crisco, all returning guests, right? Oh, yeah. All been here yes, before. Yeah. Uh, so, so we don't have to worry about you know getting uh, getting the nervousness out of the way. Um, we just get right into some of this stuff because I think the reason I ask you guys to come in here, you know, is because you're in the, you're in the trenches of what's going on out there dealing with customers and, and drivers and dispatchers and all of it. I mean, it it is the engine that makes this thing go and and y'all are making it happen every day. And I mean, we came off of uh, 2022, which was just, 
an unbelievable year for trucking, right? And I think everybody knows that. It was unbelievable for us as a company, but also the owner-operators. I mean, we see their numbers and, and how they've done. I mean, it's just been fantastic of a year, 2022. Now we're getting, you know, getting into 2023, and everybody's like, oh, hmm, what's going to happen in 2023? You know, it could go any, it could go anywhere because we don't know. But uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, we're coming out of the holidays um, and, and what things are looking like there, what your customers are seeing freight-wise maybe. Um, and, and then we'll go from there. We'll start. Of course, this is we got Bradley with the pneumatics, uh, so he can he can keep us in touch with that. And then Scotty and Nick Crisco, which are brothers, they are going to keep us in touch with the dump. So let's start with the pneumatics first, Bradley. What do you think's going on? I mean, reflecting on through the holidays and now that it's cranked back up, what's going on? What are you seeing? I feel like it's going pretty good. It's holding strong from how we finished 2022 i think it's carrying right along you know you always have like you said i guess we call it a little bit of holiday hangover you know but lots of people customers and, and owner operators are off work uh so there's always a little bit of slowness from that coming out of the gate but it seems to be every week that we've been back from new year's it's continued to get busier kind of back to where we were before the holidays so except plastics yeah plastic plastics a little bit down it's it's one of those deals it's kind of if it's if it's hot it's it's really hot and if it's not it's not but uh there's been some good signs in it too we've been doing a lot more plastic um keeping those guys busy on it um austin uh, our dispatcher he's actually down in houston this week with colby foster they're going to see customers every day, all day, uh, trying to drum up some more business and visit some old customers that we used to work for just to kind of see what their feel is about it. So I'm sure we'll get a good report on it probably this Friday afternoon or Monday. And just so our listeners know, we have a dedicated trailers for plastics. And then we also have other trailers that uh, haul everything else. So, you know, plastics, when that's not – happening sometimes you got to grab another trailer and keep them busy i guess if that's the case yeah yeah they can definitely i mean we use them to hook to our regular pneumatics all the time and there's a lot of the stuff that we do on the straight pneumatics that they can do with their vacuums i know that kind of it, it may discourage some people sometimes they're kind of scared of it you know because they don't have the vibrators on the trailer and it's just a little bit different moving it through there without that but it's something we've always done and it's good to have to fall back on because we've we've been needing help so it helps helps us on the regular side but it's uh it's it's helped us pull through some of the slower times on plastic what about it don't uh guys scotty nick what are y'all seeing on the <clears throat> on that bulk freight man you know it's uh, likewise we've experienced some holiday hangover um doesn't it seem like that's getting longer every year? I mean, to get customers back to work. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, even the ones in, in the middle of the year tend to drag on, like your Easter's and your Thanksgiving's and your Fourth of July's. Customers oh. close down more. But, uh, you know, as far as, uh, I mean, we're, st we're still keeping guys busy. You might ha not have a load on your geo tab waiting for you, uh, when you when, before you dump. Um Sometimes it's taken us a minute to, you know, sort things out and figure out where you need to go. But, uh, I mean, guys are still making money. Um, customers seen, you know, I started getting some fertilizer orders actually this afternoon. I know we're mm -hmm. getting into spring. So, yeah. especially in end dumps, <clears throat> we're, we have a lot of seasonal stuff. So, you bounce from fertilizer season and then into the landscaping season. And then, you know, so. But, yeah, it's uh, – there's nothing to worry about. Right. Yeah, like you said, I mean, the holidays, it used to seem like people would take, customers would take a day off for a couple of days, and now they take off from December 18th to the first of the year, you know. Or it's you January see, 15th. Yeah. Seems like you see more and more of that, you know, and then the first week of the year was a four-day week, and you know, we're really just kind of getting our bearings on getting back to a normal routine. Um, like you said, 2022 was incredible. Um, 2021 was incredible, yeah. you know, so it's really been, um, 
it's been extremely busy, busier than at any point that I've ever been here. Um, and we're still busy, um, but like you said, it, it, it's transitioned some. You can see a little bit of settling in the uh, market as far as uh, competition and um, maybe that post-pandemic rush when everything came out of the pandemic and it was just insane. Wow. Um, I think every, you know all trucking uh, markets probably experienced that to a degree. Um, and it seems like that's settling some, but we're still, like I said, we're still busy. It just may, um, there may be times here and there, like we might not have a load right that second, but you know, you might be waiting an hour or two, uh, where we're kind of piecing things together. Um, that's not happening a lot, but it is happening some, uh, there's still plenty of work. So dispatch notifies you guys when they got a problem somewhere somebody needs a load we try to start the day every day late you know lately when when it gets like this <clears throat> i mean the only thing you can do is come in prepared and one thing that we do is we make i mean it's kind of old school but we get out a long old piece of paper with uh states on it and pass the sheet around to dispatchers they write down you know this is we do this every afternoon for the ensuing day for the following day they write down where their trucks are going to be empty approximately what time so that we're not just coming in here getting yeah. blindsided every 30 minutes with empty trucks i mean we try to have some sort of game plan guys that don't have a they don't have a pre-plan pre-plan load for them they're they're telling y'all and yeah we we make a list the afternoon prior like we will this afternoon of when we come in tomorrow a guy that's not on a plan you know and we're actively working together um, the operations managers and all the fleet managers to keep the guys moving. Um, you know, so it's uh, it's a juggling act a lot of a lot of times with um, different guys' needs and where they're needing to get home. Sometimes certain loads don't fit where they're needing to be or trying to get for the weekend. So you might we might have to you know just take a little bit more time to f find the puzzle piece that fits for them. But we're um, but yeah, as the guys are working on or don't have a plan for their guys, then we're we're actively working together to try to get them moving. Well, I think we've just been so spoiled, you know, for the last two years uh, or more, uh, all of us, uh, you know, with having l multiple loads for each truck, which where we're going to go type deal. And and that we all know that uh, even the, the truck driver knows that's not reality. It is nice, and it's nice while it lasts. But uh, – it's not all. I mean, it, it's not always going to be like that. I mean, of course, but you know, they. they uh, I mean, to me, I'm like I, I, I still see because I look at the end result and and look at checks and and money made. I mean, people are making money. I mean, you guys are uh, digging harder, and you have to look other places, but you come up with it. I mean, you're not going to let a guy not work. Right, right, right. I mean, we we we'll figure something out. Right, right. right. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, I tell you what's incredible is just the over the years the 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 vastness of the customer base that we've built here as a team. Like you can go back and you know I was looking back the other day. I was scrolling orders for something in Tennessee, and I found some. We we had done like 180 loads out of strawberry plains tennessee going to clarksville tennessee. and I, you know you almost kind of forget about stuff like that so you know i mean <clears throat> people are like wondering what is freight going to look like in 23 compared to 22 well it's going to look different but that's i mean 22 looked different than 21 and they were both banner years for both the driver and oakley so i mean and I think that's probably a product of us, us being so versatile, both, you know, with our equipment that we haul and the equipment that we own and the the uh, the ports and whatnot we own. I mean, it, you know, you can just – you can run it a lot of different ways and stick your hands in a lot of different pots, so – which gives us a good base to stand on. Yeah, the end dumps are, um, you know, which is what we deal with day in, day out, are just – they're so diverse. Like you said, a lot of it's seasonal – but even in the in the slower of times, the diversity of different things you can haul, and 
the amount of experience of years of guys in the office has changed a lot than it looked 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of lot of uh, resources, and we have different ways and ideas, and just um, of figuring out ways to keep guys busy. We're not a, um, uh, you know, a lot of companies are. I mean, they build their company on one customer. And if that one customer collapses, then the company collapses. Thank goodness we're not like that. I mean, yeah, how many different sure. products, how many different customers, I mean, does pneumatics deal with? I mean, hundreds? Yeah, for sure. Oh, thousands? There's, there's no telling how many. I was thinking when they were talking, you know, it it always looks different. It always changes, especially from year to year. But I'll, I'll go on – vacation for a week and i'll come back the next week and i may see something in the computer and i'll be like what is this what is this town where is this load where'd it come from you know because we're always looking to for something new new to do to add to what we can always do so it's yeah we with plenty that, of options going off of that right there bradley what Give our give our listeners an idea of the competition that you guys deal with with other trucking companies, brokers that you have to compete against to get loads. I mean, is that a is that a headache? Is that uh, something? I mean, or is there just is is I mean, in my mind, there's so much to do out there. We haven't even tapped into uh, you know the dry bulk business. There is yeah, there is a lot. I mean, there's more than we could probably wrap our head around, you know, that we, but we still see it and feel it. I mean, you can go on some of the load boards and things like that that are public, you know, and see all the different brokers and 3PLs. It seems like there's more than ever, you mm-hmm. know, people getting in. Uh, and the good thing is that we're, we have the truck with the asset, you know, and that's a feather in our cap that, Somebody figured out a long time ago was was, was the right way to yeah. go about it, but yes, they're uh, it's it's very competitive to answer your question. I mean, yeah, it's when it's super busy, you don't feel it as much because you're you know you're looking at your the demand for the truck is you got more loads than you do trucks, and then when it when it starts to shift, you know it, there's more people trying to get in that same. Food does bowl. It, does that go ahead? Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I think it's a mirror image of, you know, probably what you guys deal with in recruiting. I mean, I, I can't drive from <clears throat> the office to my house without getting behind a van trailer and that van trailer having a sticker on it saying how successful you can be by just calling this number and we're paying this and home on week. I mean, so what I'm saying is, is it's, 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 if you're a truck driver, listen to this podcast and you you're driving down the road Ask yourself how many times over the last 30, 60 days and either a company has directly reached out to you trying to get you to come over or just take note, look around and see how many different trucking companies are trying to pull you in their direction. Well, that is exactly what goes on with our customers. Mm-hmm. Other trucking companies are, are contacting them and going after them trying to get their business that we've worked so hard to get and that we have to work so hard to keep. So... We pride ourselves on customer service. We and they know when they're calling Oakley that they're probably not getting the cheapest rate. But then again, we're not paying our drivers the cheapest pay, so they expect good service. And you know, it's like a lot of things in this world. You, we try to <clears throat> stand on the root of you get what you pay for. So, but yes, short answer: competition is out there, and it always will be. Yeah, because they're always coming after that freight. I mean, you know, the same thing that we're going for too. A lot of times, because we 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 know over the years we've taken we've taken lanes from other companies, and they've taken lanes from us. You know, they and it, it gets into a bidding war sometimes. And there there are customers. I'm assuming that well, I know that customer service don't mean crap to them. That's a good point. I mean. Ideally, and we have a number of good customers that, you know, they send us the orders. We take care of it. We know they're going to send us something next week. Those are the ones we that are ideal. You've also got a number of customers, exactly what you're talking about, that you can work for for months and will cut you for a dollar. 
for two dollars just because it's i mean it's it's a cutthroat business at times i mean and they're they're doing the same thing everybody else in business is doing and they're more so concerned about the money than they are the service you know so it's a it's a juggling act they are in the beginning they think they are i've seen many times y'all seen that where they 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 come kick us back out they come calling back don't they nick they, they kick us <laughs> out you know because we may be too high and company b come in here and cut the rate and then then they figure out dang that dang oakley but in those times yeah in those times you know the service becomes even more important because if you're if we're consistently late or contaminations you know then they, they'll they'll have another company knocking on the door so that's where it comes imperative that we're what's your uh what's you guys conversation like with a customer in other words you promise them something that the truck driver has to deliver, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what's that conversation like to a customer that maybe doesn't know us or we're trying to earn their business? Well, I, I don't know about these guys, but I try to – well, I do know about these guys. I know they do the same thing. Everybody just does it, does it in their own little way. You know, like when you're dispatching, you – one of the most important things is develop a strong relationship with your driver. Well, when you're in operations, likewise for developing a strong relationship with your customer. So, you know, if you're chasing business, you know, I think persistence, uh, trying to feel them out, you know, some, you know, it's kind of like when you go buy a car, you don't want somebody hounding, or at least me, I don't know about y'all, but when I go buy a truck or something, I'd like to just walk around by myself for a little bit you know, mm-hmm. let me know what you got, but, you know, and then I'll, I'll seek you out. So you have customers like that, that, you know, might, you might want to stay at arm's length a little bit. And then you have customers that you just need to call every day, maybe more than once a day. Um, and as far as existing customers and repeat business, I think the relationship is just paramount. Um, you know, know what they like to do in their off time know what kind of liquor they like to drink, you know, know if, you know, how many kids they got, what they're, you know, what stuff like that. I mean, that goes a long ways. Yeah. What you, Brian? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's good to, to know them and, and know what they like outside of the office, you know, that way, whether you got something good to call them about or bad, you can kind of start it off with a joke or, you know, ease into it with them. Cause you, cause you know what they like, you can mess with them a little bit. Um, but there's some that are just here's what you do. Yeah. You go do it, you know, and you don't don't talk much, but there's there's a lot of them that I've talked to I I'd, I'd say every day almost since I've been here and know them really well, know what they like and well, they it, know how I operate and it just makes it work better overall, you know, whenever you have a good relationship with them and, and can talk to them and tell them what's what's happening whether it's good or bad. You know, the to me, it's it's the product we're selling. You know, Oakley. I mean, I always tell the recruiters, you know, um, how'd you like to be recruiting for for a company that you know ain't worth a crap, and and takes advantage of drivers, don't treat them right. How'd you like to be that recruiter? Be tough. Yeah, I mean, we have. <clears throat> you know, it's great to be have the product. The product sells itself. You know, we're just recruiting as paper pushers, you know, getting it getting it done. You guys I feel are the same because you got you got an awesome product to sell, you know, Oakley trucking reputation. And you know if you had a bunch of if you were at a company and you had a bunch of truck drivers that wasn't worth a dime that you couldn't depend on, then it'd make it hard for you to sell that customer and go, Hey, we'll take care of you. You know, and that's the I mean that's the best product with us is our owner operators that we've got that we know they're gonna get it done and it and it feels good it makes it just easier mm-hmm. you know to me it would be for you guys to oh, yeah. sell the product and and that's why we get to charge we charge them a little bit more because of the good customer service of the, the owner operators that we're sending in there the equipment that's going in there the the way that we're we um we take care of them i mean i was telling the recruiting class last i believe it was last week of you know, how over there when I started over in the dungeon, the old office, I mean, you didn't you didn't leave until every load was covered. It's just you did not leave. 
He didn't leave the building. There wasn't – there was maybe five of us, six of us, and we wasn't – nobody's leaving till this load's covered. And how are we going to get it done, you know? And it was – but it was that – instilling that customer service, you know, in, in me and us, you guys, and you're doing it on down the line that really makes a difference, I think, to where, like you were saying, we've created this – product now that is with all these customers i mean we just got you know so much it it's like it i mean it it almost moves itself if that makes any sense i mean it's just so we've we over the years we've created so many good customers you know and and new customers wanting in and and good owner operators it's just a it's just a great product to be able to do it so you know i I couldn't imagine selling uh man selling a bad company you know to somebody that just ain't that wouldn't work i couldn't handle that so you know we we i think um we touched a little bit on this but the i don't watch the news um almost purposely um i I watch some local news you know get that's about it um but you know people tell me that it's it's all going to crap out there going to be a recession or we're in a recession supposedly they say how how are you guys going to handle that i mean people say we're in a recession do you pay attention to it or what 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 would you tell our owner operators that hey if a recession hits here's how we're going to handle it i think you've got to pay attention to it and have it on your radar uh, just because history says that it's going to happen again at some point. And it has happened here before, and Oakley has been through it more than once. Um, the way that we operate every day is a good good way to make it through it. Um, you know, the way we're talking about keeping an eye on trucks. Um, if a guy's been sitting for so long, you know, for X amount of time, you know, then it's – it's all hands on deck. We've got to put our put our minds together, get this going. Same way on booking freight. Um, you know, we have conversations about stuff we've done in the past that maybe we're not doing, being more aggressive on, on booking things maybe that we haven't been, um, looking at what's out there that we're not doing and being aggressive and try to make deals maybe weeks to months ahead of time um, to keep the guys busy. Um, you know, it's the way we've done it in the past. Um, it hel- it helps having um, some guys, you know, you guys and our, the Manleys and Scotts and everybody that's just been here for years. There's a lot of experience in the office. Um, it kind of gives you somewhat of a safety net. Like, man, we've been through this before. We'll get through it. We know what it looks like when it's great. We know what it looks like when it's not great. And we've got a lot of owner operators that have been here through the same things, yeah. you know. So it's not – it's just uh, we'll make it through it if it does. I don't I don't think it will get to that point. Um, I do think we'll get, you know, experience um, some slowdown compared to last year. But um, – I don't, I don't. I don't think it will get to where it was like an '08 and '09 at that. You know, to those times. You second that, Scott? Yeah, I was. Yeah, he kind of took the words right out of my mouth as far as being aggressive and just taking it head on. I mean, that is literally how we. <clears throat> even when times are good, that's our attitude. You know, attacking problems at the moment when they. You know. So. When it's uh, when it's a little slower, or rec- God forbid, a recession does happen. You know, I mean, there you can't hang your head. You gotta. I mean, it's proven that if you just get up, put your boots on every day, and go to work, and come in here and continue to get good service to the customer, continue to get a good service to the driver, be honest with yourself, your coworkers, your customers, and your drivers. I mean, honesty goes a long, long ways. Um, you know, I, I know if a driver calls in and, you know, we don't have him below, we just need to tell him, hey, look, give us a minute. Um, we're trying to piece something together. You know, just, I mean, honesty, there's really no. Uh, and that's what they, I mean, that's what they want to hear. And one, one other yeah, thing I will say. the truth. 
Yeah, the the truth. And and, <laughs> and like Nick said, we we're gonna be booking some stuff that you probably didn't haul in twenty twenty three. You know, if 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 it comes to that, uh, you know, just reverting back to what I talked about earlier and our and our versatility. I wrote down here on this piece of paper, I just three commodities that I can think of that we've hauled over the last ninety days that would maybe blow some people's minds in the dry bulk industry, but we've hauled expired beer, <laughs> turkey guts, and then this has been a while, but we did haul pumpkin pies. So, <laughs> Tell me we won't keep you busy. That's right. You tell, <laughs> Although nobody wants to haul it. Yeah. Pick up that load. We're going to yeah. dig in and find you something. Oh, we can promise you that. Uh, that's a great example of find, we're going to find something to do. I mean, we always have. We always have found something, and, and 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 to me, I think a definition of of if it ever of a slow time at Oakley has been, we're hauling different products. With the gravy train is not there like it normally is, you know that uh, hey go back and get you another one, uh, hey go back and get you another one type deal. That's that's you know when it's gravy, then you start you know we start digging hauling different stuff because it's out there. That's the thing about it. The stuff's out there. It's just a matter of expanding our customer base, which is huge already, uh, that we can do. I mean, that's uh, – and that's why I was asking that about, you know, a, a recession. I mean, I, if I was an owner-operator, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than right here. But that's because I know – it's what I know. Uh, the owner-operator that hadn't been here or been through a, a bad time – they don't know that, you know, um, they, they can, they, they can jump the gun real quick, you know, of a bad week and oh my gosh, you know, panic set in, but, uh, and we were fortunate enough during 2023 to be able to pass a lot of that on to the driver with the 20, with the 20 cent surcharge. Yeah. And, you know, right. so far so good in 2023, you right. know what I mean? So, right. I hope we are able to continue that too. Absolutely. So keep our, Keep them busy. I mean, I, and that's the the biggest point I think I was wanting to get across is to to our listeners and you know just get information from you guys and how you deal with customers. You know, um, ease ease our owner operators' minds. You know, of any bad news or stuff that they're taking in that are negative. Uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than right here working for Oakley because I know you guys and are in the middle of it and you ain't gonna go home till everybody's got a load i mean that's or at least a direction ahead yeah right that's the way it is i mean we we uh we've all worked together to make it happen uh what about customers real quick we'll touch on that um i know bradley you said austin and kobe were down visiting uh do we uh we send guys out i mean you guys go out very often and drum up business talk to customers yeah, so, some more than others. I've actually already this year, uh, me and Colby and I, we went out and we saw a handful in one day just kind of around Arkansas, not too far from here. But it's it's good to get out and see them, you know, and put the put the name with the face, voice with the face to see who you're talking to all the time. Um, but we do, lots of people get out, you know, of course the COVID stuff kind of, put a little bit of a slowdown on that because a lot of people are working from home. They're not, you know, in, in Can't the office. Go see so yeah. that slowed it down a little bit. But uh, I feel like we always have pretty good plans to get out and get around and see some of the people we work for because it's good to do. Yeah. yeah, just on the same as we were talking about earlier, getting to know them outside of work. You know, they're no different than us. You know, if you go out and see them, you go to lunch or – dinner you know get to know get to talking to them outside of work or what their hobbies are and kids and ball games or what you know it's good to do that just to establish a relationship um you know because they're they're just like we are anybody else when you get on the phone or email it's it's not it's not the same as a face-to-face you yeah. know so we do do that um like he said the covid deal it seemed about two years that was yeah it was about all put on hold you know um I remember we went to Chicago, I guess it was the end of 21, and it seemed like every other person we tried to call up there was at home, you know. So I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's loosened up some, but um, 
but yeah, it's good. It's it's invaluable to get out and um, and to have face to face contact with them. Yeah, I think you got to. I mean, we got to. They may not want you to come, but once you get in there in front of them, it helps a lot. You know, just from the few I've seen and from a couple of weeks ago, it's amazing how little they actually know about us and what we do. You know, because they pretty much see you as what you do for them. So they don't, they may not have any idea that we have all these guys dispatching end dumps or we have all the river ports and all the stuff going on here. You know, we've had customers come here to see us and they're just like, wow, look at all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy that, that they know so little about what we actually can do. So, yeah, that's a good point. That, that, that comes is. up a lot in conversations too. It seems like when you're out talking, is that you will get, um, questions and interest in about our, our barging or our ports or things that they have no idea that we offered, you know. So it's just, like he said, you know, they, they might think of Oakley, the dump guy. Yeah. You know, I send them my loads to do X and have no idea what else, Yeah, you know, Oakley as a company can offer. Yeah, we've seen that a lot over the years. When you get in front of them, they don't realize what all we do, how big we are. Uh. Anything else you guys got on your list you wanted to cover? Um, uh, I don't get y'all together very often in the end dumps and the pneumatics, and we're, we're discussing customers, freight, that kind of stuff with Bradley Simpson, Scotty Crisco, and Nick Crisco. So uh, y'all got anything else you want to add? Did we want to talk about at all this uh, detention pay, anything like that? Is that something or any paperwork that we need to – any common mistakes that we need to tell our owner operators? I would say this on the detention thing. <clears throat> it is number one, when it, when, you know, if you get to a customer and you reach that two hour mark, you need to be calling your dispatcher so that we can notify the customer. Um, now there are some places, for instance, Owens Corning, Atlanta, where it's kind of probably understood that there's going to be detention. Um, but like, the one-offs, you get somewhere and you're having to wait and you hit that two-hour mark, you need to be letting your dispatcher know so that we can get with the customer and not just send them a bill two weeks later without any communication. And then obviously, that you know, just the ABCs of, of, of your demerge sheet, you know, your pay number, your truck number, what time you arrived, try to find some sort of detailed reason as to why you're waiting <clears throat> because what you write on that sheet goes with the invoice to the customer so we need something a little more specific uh, as of you know waiting the load try to find out why you're waiting the load is there a rail car in the way is there you know is the scale down is you know wh whatever get a name and a signature and if they refuse to sign it then write on there refuse to sign um that's and, good and that's pretty much it pretty common on pneumatics y'all got a yeah, same for us. You, you, it seems like recently in the past, I don't know how long, but um, ones that we used to get detention with, they, they do want it to be communicated now as it's happening. You know, because I guess it's such a big occurrence at all these places. They want to know because they may be able to make a phone call and get something done. So I'll always communicate it to your dispatcher, even if you know you've been paid at this place before, because we want to make sure and get your money, you know, the max amount of money you can get. So I always communicate it, even if, if you don't think it's a big deal. Um, but same deal, just as much detail as you can put on the sheet, you know, and put the, do, do both ends, the loading information and the unloading, even if you don't have detention on one end that way it'll help the customer or whoever's looking at that invoice in the future understand more exactly what it what it is you mean the customer just don't pay it when you send them the i wish the they merge would bill over there and <laughs> need to merge for four hours they, they just would. don't send you a check no <laughs> no they want to know a little bit more right. maybe yeah so we can help help yourself there um owner operators and in, in any detention pay that you run into any Make sure you communicate and uh, uh, details because that piece of paper you're filling out is going to the customer for them to read and uh, pay us, and so we can pay you. And if they don't, well, I guess that's each situation. If they don't pay us, we don't pay them. 
is pretty much the standard. So, but I guess that's every situation we we right. we figure out whether we we have to or not. So, all right, guys. Hey, man, good stuff. You know it. Uh, I know it felt like a little negativity in this episode, but to me, it's good honesty uh, stuff that we're communicating to our owner operators. Uh, you know, because we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I have confidence, and I'm sure you guys do too, because we've been doing this a long time. And I'm confident that it's going to be another good year. I mean, I really am. Uh, whether whether bad does come, we, we, still, we still make it good. I mean, it's just a, it's a great place to be. Um, I want our owner operators and their families to have that confidence too, like we do, that uh, – we're with a good company, and we're going to make it work. And you guys are the ones that are making it work every day with the phone calls you make and the people you talk to and the, the rates you come up with and the loads you book. And, I mean, it's a, it's it's a, something that is makes this whole thing turn. And uh, I appreciate you guys doing your job and what you do because it uh, that's where it's at. That's where the money is. You've right got to make that. the money. So. All right, well, thanks. Uh, hey, be sure and check out our episodes. We got uh, we had, uh, what was last week's episode, Miles? Oh, pre-pass. Um, no, the one before this one. Yeah, yeah, this will be pre-pass, and then this one will be next week. So uh, check out that if you got questions. It was a pretty good episode, pre-pass. Uh, the next one coming up, we actually got a customer coming in. Uh, we're going to talk to, uh, I believe it's Chad with Alltech Recycling. So we're going to get a little more information about how their process works and what they do and, and how they work with Oakley Trucking. So it's going to be a pretty good, pretty good episode there, I think. So, And, and we got other good episodes in the works um, coming up. So everybody be sure and, uh, and listen to the Oakley podcast. Uh, do your subscribe and, and comment and hit that uh, thumbs up button. That some reason Miles tells me to do that because it helps something. So <laughs> <laughs> helps us get out there to everybody else. But hey, I can say we've got um, uh, a lot more subscribers than we used to. So it's coming on up every week, and I appreciate everybody doing that. Uh, uh, but more than I never want to forget, and I'm never going to. Uh, this podcast was created to communicate with our owner operators and their families. Um, yes, it's turned into a little bit more and it's helped in recruiting and retention, but that that's the thing that it was created for is to communicate stuff like this to our owner operators. So they're in touch with what we're thinking and what we're doing in here. And, um, and I just want to continue that every week. I know not every week it happens, but, uh, Sometimes I struggle with some content, but uh, this is all good stuff, and I appreciate you guys doing it, man. And I appreciate everybody listening to us. Uh, let us know if you got suggestions on things you want to want us to talk about, um, or or anything you come up with. I mean, we'll be glad to visit with you about it. Uh, once again, thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you next week.